Hey everyone. Every once in a while I'll get an amp to work on uh, here on the workbench and right now I have this Rockford Fosgate. It's a Punch 150 that has some failed output transistors. I'm not going to do a whole um, a walkthrough of you know like how I go about repairing the amps because this one's just going to be a quick uh, so I'm of a quick video. I just wanted to show mostly how to go about replacing the components that are mounted on these like little thermal strips that uh, Rockford seems to tend to use quite a bit. Unlike some other amps that have the power devices mounted individually on the board such as this um, old Memphis amp um, where they just use like some clips to hold each uh, or like all these MOSFETs up against the case uh, this one's a nice one, check that out. This thing was burnt to a crisp. So anyways, on an app like this, it's very easy to replace individual components just by desoldering them off the board because, you know, they're not attached to anything and you can remove uh, one at a time if needed. On Rockford Fosgate's amp, or Rockford Fosgate amps, where they're on this strip here, it's really difficult to remove them individually unless uh, you use uh, the technique that I'm going to do here because trying to heat it up with a say a soldering iron on the back here on the component uh, and these MOSFETs these are uh, these are 28 and 15 and then we got some 36 P15 over here uh, this is a two channel lamp by the way uh, so this over here I believe is one channel and this is the other channel there's actually some sh uh, one or more shorter components on this side um, when you're doing a, an amp repair like this uh, if one side, like one of the channels has failed and you know at least one of the transistors or MOSFETs is bad, it's usually best to just replace them all just to just to be on the safe side because if uh, that one failed and then the other ones are, you know, kind of marginal or whatever, they're getting close to failing as well, uh, you're just going to, you know, have more trouble on your hands later on because say, you know, that one's fine now but the other ones are kind of getting there and then whatever little thing like causes one of the other ones to fail or whatever, you know, it can take out one or more with it. Here's an example of another Rockford Fosgate amp. This one, they didn't mount the MOSFETs or all the MOSFETs on like those uh, thermal strips, but they did on these here. And I've actually, I've had some uh, amps that have been previously fixed by other people before that I've had to rework because they've failed in some other fashion or whatever, where I've seen that they have tried to desolder these components off of the thermal uh, strip by obviously heating it up with like a soldering iron at the at, at the tab right here and you know then they're probably able to pry off the old part but then to put the new one on they have to heat that tab and try to get it to stick to the the solder pad underneath and it usually looks really messy and then there's like a, a big blob of solder on it as you can tell like from factory there it's it they're pretty flat so they sit just um i mean yeah there's solder on the board but they sit you know like really really flush up against it so, you know, then this uh, touches the case and then that's how it, they dissipate heat. Uh, in this case, you know, we got a bunch of those thermal strips all over the place. But the ones we're interested in are mostly just the ones back here. So I've already taken the liberty of uh, removing all the screws off the board. So then, you know, we got the case. We can move this out of the way. And <laughs> it would be impossible to try to get these off while it's still attached to the case, even if I was trying to, like, heat it with a soldering iron there. Just because of the fact that the you know the whole case is the heat sink so unless i was planning on heating up the whole case to temperatures where it would allow me to melt the solder underneath here yeah it's not going to happen all right so the first thing we want to do is we want to remove these components off the board the best way to do that is to use a solder sucker on each of the pins here and try to loosen them up as much as possible it's because once we do that you know then we, then we can remove the whole little module as a unit um, I believe you can buy the whole little assembly from like Rockford or something but I have a feeling it's probably quite pricey because of the fact that you know you're, you're basically you're paying for everything on there um, and I'm sure they probably have some sort of a markup usually I'll just uh, order the the just the MOSFETs that I need and you know just uh, uh, replace them myself off the board here before I remove these from the board, I, I want to actually just uh, wipe off the, the heat sink grease because I, it's not going to help me if it's on there. And I'll just usually get like a paper towel and just uh, moisten it with some alcohol and just wipe it all off as best as I can. Alright, I've got these uh, part way done now. As you can see, I've removed solder from just the two side pins on each one of those MOSFETs. 
and that would be the uh, base and the source on, on these. The collector is a lot harder to remove the solder from because of the fact that it's mount or that the pin th there goes directly to the plate on the back of the, the device and these are the ones that are mounted to these plates. So the best uh, way that I found to deal with those is to heat the whole plate to um, pretty make it pretty warm, like get it pretty toasty there with the heat gun and then you're able to go and get the solder out of these pins because otherwise it's a real pain and you, you know you end if you uh, try to heat it up too much with either the soldering iron or you know solder sucker or whatever you can end up damaging the pads in there so it's best to avoid doing that by preheating the plate first that way when you heat up the the collector pin right there uh, a lot of that heat doesn't get drawn away and so a lot of it's able to stay there and melt that solder and then you're able to get it out It's a good idea to keep the heat gun moving back and forth. You don't want to concentrate the heat too much in one area. You kind of want to spread it out. But after you do that, then it should be a lot easier to just heat up that one pin and get the solder out of it. I'm still having a little bit of a hard time on that one, but it's not as bad. When you try to do this without any heat on that, on that plate whatsoever, it's really difficult. And it's getting there. I just got to work at it a little bit more. And I may need to heat this up a little bit. Alright, so after we've uh, done that, then it becomes a lot easier to get these out. This one uh, came out pretty much a uh, uh, low effort. Uh, got all kinds of grease on my hands now. So that one's pretty easy. This one, taking a little bit more work, but trying to be careful not to uh, break off any of the inside of that, of those holes. Well, of course it's not coming out. I still have three pins right here in the middle that I haven't removed yet. Yeah, all the other ones should be loose. So that one should be free once I remove those. Okay, so now to remove the old parts from this thermal plate, I'm using one of these little helping hand things. This one, as you can tell, it's an old one, but H doesn't matter as long as it does what it's supposed to do, which is hold this little board for us. Um, the easiest way to do this is to take a heat gun and just heat it up from the bottom until the two uh, components loosen up. Well, in the case of this board, two. If it's the other board, you know, then it'd be four. But it's uh, pretty straightforward. I just blast it with heat from the bottom and since I'm not really too worried about saving these two particular parts, you know, I'll just heat it up until they loosen up and then I go ahead and pull them off with uh, some pliers or something. While I'm doing this, I try to make sure to keep the the plate, you know, level with the, so that these parts, once they heat up, you know, they don't accidentally slide off or something and end up falling on you and, you know, because there's going to be a little bit of solder on there so it gets pretty hot. You can see that some of the old flux is kind of bubbling up there underneath and I give it a little bit of a poke just to see when it loosens up. They're not quite loose yet, so I'm gonna keep uh, heating them up a little bit longer here. After a while, I'm probably gonna switch to the uh, high heat setting on the heat gun. And I'm probably gonna do that now because I've been doing this here for a little bit now. Oh, there it goes, no need. So once that's up, you can just uh, pull them right off. So now that this component's out, you can see that the pad on the on the thermal strip has the exact same shape as the plate on the MOSFET. So basically, what that does is when you put the new one on there, you know we're gonna we're gonna clean all this old flux off there, and we're gonna put some new uh, fresh flux and maybe add a little bit of solder to it because when you pull the old parts off, they you know they they take some of it with them. So. Uh, we're going to do that and once we uh, heat this up enough to the point where the solder underneath melts it pulls the part you know right into place and it aligns it so it's uh, pretty much you know spot on where it needs to be you don't have to sit there and uh, manually align it and try to get it right uh, pretty much uh, the molten solder and the flux does all the work for you as we'll see all right we're getting ready to add, put in the replacement parts now i've put a little bit of solder as you can probably tell right there in the middle of both of these uh, pads right here and that's uh, to help replace some of the ones we lost when we removed the old components. Uh, the new parts I'm going to place on top of that but I'm going to put a little bit of flux on the back of the parts and also I've already applied a little bit of flux to the pads themselves with this brush just a very light coat doesn't need to be really heavy so after doing that and putting some like on the back of the replacement components uh, this one doesn't have it yet but we can go ahead and uh, 
put the new parts on and then we'll begin heating. One thing you need to be careful with when uh, working on some of these is that some will have a little SOT23 components uh, like in this little spot here where, this, um, where these pads are. This one doesn't have it and it also doesn't have that three pin connector there. Those I believe are used for monitoring the temperature um, by the rest of the system just to make sure it's not overheating or whatever. Just if you're working on one of these and it's got those components you just got to be sure that you know when you're removing the old parts or putting the, the new ones on that you don't accidentally knock them off or something and you know, screw it up. Okay so the new parts are on and as you notice or as you can tell, I haven't put them on completely, you know, like aligned on that pad. And uh, we'll see why. Well, I mean, part of the reason is because uh, you'll see that the, once the solder melts, it'll just kind of pull the part into place. And it just uh, makes it a lot, you know, easier. You don't have to worry about like trying to sit there and align it or anything. So we're going to begin by just gently heating it on both sides with the heat gun. I, you want to be a lot more careful when actually installing them than when you are removing them because you don't want to damage the new parts. So I'm going to like just try to evenly heat the top and the pad and then just like you know just gradually raise both of their temperatures and then towards the end we're gonna you know blast the bottom with uh, just the heat gun for a little bit until the solder melts enough for the the two MOSFETs to like fall into place and you know once that happens then we just uh, leave it alone and we let it cool. All right, I've been heating these for a couple minutes now, and now I'm just gonna go in from the bottom and just uh, kind of gradually bring in the heat gun in. And once I start seeing the flux kind of bubble and start to boil, then that's when I'm gonna go in with the, the tweezers and just kind of give it a nudge, and then we'll hopefully see the the MOSFETs just kind of float into place. So it should happen any second now, and actually I can kind of see it happening now. There it goes. We saw that the one on the right just kind of fell into place there, and if I nudge it, it should just kind of get pulled completely, and there it goes. The one on the left here, let's give it a tap. Come on. Still not quite. Oh, there it goes. Now oh, this one here didn't do so hot. There it goes. Now it's in place. So now I'm gonna remove heat and just let it cool. Okay, so there's the two components in place. Now they're, I mean, they've cooled off for a little bit here, but now I don't have to worry about them falling off because they solidified pretty quick. And as you can see, they're pretty well mounted on there. They're, uh, the alignment, actually the one on the left looks a tiny bit crooked, but it's not bad. I mean, it'll, it'll work just fine. The one on the right looks a lot better. But yeah, that's uh, basically how you uh, work on these or how you can do it at, on, on your own. Uh, this would be the kind of thing that would be better suited for doing in something like a reflow oven which I don't have at the moment but it's actually another pending project so I might have something to, to do this with uh, later on once I get that done. So I hope you find this helpful if you're ever working on one of these Rockford faucets that has these little thermal plates. As I said I'm not doing the whole repair of that amp on this video that's uh, I'll do one maybe eventually with a different one or whatever because I still have to go through it and check and see if anything else is damaged. I knew that, that some of these were bad for sure so that's why I'm replacing them. But uh, yeah, as I said, hope you find this helpful. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if uh, you like this kind of stuff. Subscribe if you want updates and I'll see you guys next time.